Did God really become incarnate as Jesus? Why would he choose to be mocked and scorned and crucified, all to be raised from the dead? Here are some reasons God would do that. Theologians have always claimed that a major reason for why God would choose to become incarnate was to make atonement for human sins. All humans have wronged God seriously. When we do wrong to someone, we must repent and apologize, but we must also try to provide reparation for the wrong we have done. And it is good that someone wronged seriously, in this case God, should require the wrongdoer to make some serious attempt at reparation before forgiving him, for that forces the wrongdoer to take his wrongdoing seriously. But we are in no position to provide reparation for our past sins. Yet while the wrongdoer must himself repent and apologize, someone else can provide him with the reparation for him to offer back to the person wronged. And so God incarnate could provide a perfect human life for us to offer back to God as reparation for the life we ought to have led. One who lives a perfect life in typical human circumstances may well be killed for it, and such a death would complete a perfect life. We can then say, please accept this life and death instead of the life we ought to have led. This reparation is then a sacrifice offered to God, and a resurrection would constitute God's demonstration to us that the sacrifice had been accepted and that forgiveness is available. The second reason why God would choose to become incarnate is a reason which would operate even if humans had not sinned. Humans are subject to pain and suffering of various kinds caused by natural processes. God, being perfectly good, sometimes permits these sufferings for the sake of greater goods. The Odyssey seeks to explain what are the relevant greater goods, for example, the greater good of humans having the significant free choice of whether to cope bravely with their own suffering and show compassion to others who suffer. We humans sometimes rightly subject our own children to suffering for the sake of some greater good. For instance, make them eat a plain diet or take some special exercise for the sake of their health, or make them attend a difficult neighborhood school for the sake of good community relations. Under these circumstances, we judge it a good thing to manifest solidarity with our children by putting ourselves in somewhat the same situation, share their diet or their exercise, or become involved in the parent-teacher organization of the neighborhood school. Indeed, if we subject our children to serious suffering for the sake of greater good to others, there comes a point at which it is not merely good but obligatory to identify with the sufferer and show him that we have done so. A perfectly good God, then, would judge it a good thing to share the pain and its suffering to which we are subjected to for the sake of greater goods, by becoming incarnate, living a holy life, protesting against injustice under difficult conditions is liable to lead to execution. God needs to have told or shown us that he is God incarnate. In that case, his resurrection would constitute God's signature on the teaching, and so show us that God has identified with our suffering. And finally, we need better information about how to lead good lives in the future, and encouragement to help us do so. Humans can, and to some extent in the centuries BC, did find out for themselves what is right and wrong. But although the outlines may have been discoverable, the details are not easy to discover. Are abortion and euthanasia always wrong, or only under certain conditions? Is the taking of human life always wrong, or only under certain conditions? Is divorce always wrong? or only under certain conditions. In all of these matters and more, humans are prone not to face the deliverances of their consciousness. They need information. True, this could be provided through a revelation to some prophet without any need for incarnation. But moral information needs to be filled out by moral example. We need to be shown what a perfect life consists in. It would be good for this information to include encouraging information. For example, that God will take us to heaven if we trust him and fulfill his commandments. And it would be good if God gave us some extra help in leading the moral life, a community of encouragement. For example, a church. Again, God raising someone killed for certain teaching and living a certain life constitutes his signature of that teaching. We see all of these and more filled within the life of Jesus Christ. In other words, this affirms the doctrine that Jesus was God incarnate.